Thank you so much, Todd, for the introduction, and thanks, everyone, for being here today for this presentation. As Todd said, the title of my presentation is Experimental Transmission of Influenza A and Pierce Viruses Using an RSAO Model. We are going to start this presentation with a brief introduction for influenza and Pierce transmission. Then we'll revise the materials and methods that we use for developing the study, the results, and finally the conclusions. Influenza and peers are two of the most important diseases in pigs. Both are part of the porcine respiratory disease complex, and the economic impact of peers and influenza together is calculated in around $10 per pig. In addition, peers and influenza are two of the most important pathogens detected and isolated at the University of Minnesota BDL. But in addition, Influenza is important because it has implications for public health because it's zoonotic. There are significant efforts to control or to eliminate influenza virus and peers in farms. Control peers and influence in breeding herds is key to win virus negative pigs and to stabilize herds. Although much is known about peers and influenza transmission, there are farrowing room management practices that may facilitate and to perpetuate this viral infection in pigs prior to winning. In influenza endemic infected farms, piglets are born negative, but they are usually positive before winning. Piglets can become infected by direct contact, nose to nose with other pigs, or indirectly by contact with contaminated fomites or by aerosols. In peer transmission, we have almost the same ways, but we have also the sexual, oral, parenteral, and intranasal routes. But it's very important for peers the transmission that occurs during the gestation intrauterine. In peers virus, during herd stabilization, initially many pigs are born biuremic, but as the herd stabilizes, piglets are born negative. And we can see that when we collected processing fluids and the result for the PCR is negative. However, a number of pigs may still become positive at winning. Therefore, some practices are likely contributing to peer transmission, such as the use of needles, fomites, but what about some other management practices? In two recent studies that we developed, we compared influenza and peer surveillance sampling to determine which one is the best strategy for surveillance and monitoring. We compared eight different strategies in different levels, individual, group, and environmental, including the use of the other skin wipes. The other skin wipes is a novel strategy that we developed at the University of Minnesota in order to collect samples from groups. In this case, we are collecting samples from leaders. We are basically using a gauze with 10 ml of media and wiping the skin in the other area to collect the secretions that pig piglets are basically leaving over there during the suckling period. So this is a very easy technique. And it was very interesting to see the results that we obtained collecting these samples. We collected samples from six different farms. 80% of those samples were positive for influenza. But it was most interesting to see that 80% of those positive samples were positive also for isolation. So that means that we have viable virus that potentially could be transmitted to negative piglets. In the same way, we visited a farm during a peers outbreak. We collected samples from 20 different litters, and we obtained 18 positive litters collecting other skin wipes. That was compared again with the serum that we had a 19, so we had a good detection at least compared with the serum when we had an outbreak of peers. 
So the question that we have is, if the skin is contaminated, could those diseases be transmitted? There are likely some management practices that may facilitate the influence and peer transmission during the lactation period. And now I would like to focus two of those practices, the use of NARSAW and the cross-fostering. Farms use NARSAWs in order to adopt fall behind piglets, a standardized litter size, especially in those farms with high productivity, replace six sows, and the use of NARSAWs is estimated between 10 and 12%. On the other hand, we have the use of cross-fostering that is used also in farms to improve piglet survivability, a standardized piglet weight within litters, decreased piglet competition, and it's calculated that the use of cross-fostering is between 20 and 80 percent. I'm sure that most of the uh, audience is familiar with the terminology of the use of NARSAW, but just in case I would like just to explain what is the NARSAW in farms. Here we have three rooms in an example of a farrowing flow with one to five days, six to 12 days, and around the winning age. So when a producer or a farmer needs to move or replace any of those sows for any of the reasons that we commented previously in the previous slide, he moves sows back to replace the sows. But it's also very common to select and move the nurse sows from the winning, where usually we have positive piglets for influenza. So the question that we have is, can nurse sows transmit influence and peers between leaders through the skin? The objective of this study was to determine if sows with contaminated other skin can transmit influenza and pierce virus to pigs during the suckling period. We hypothesized that the use of NARS sows favors the transmission of influenza and pierce virus between litters prior to weaning, perpetuating the infection in piglets. We developed the study in a biosecurity level two research facilities from University of Minnesota at St. Paul campus. We used two pregnant sows. Those sows were uh, confirmed as negative by PCR for peers and also for influenza. And we used also serology to confirm those sows as uh, negative. We used three rooms and we daily collected samples from piglets and sows collecting nasal swabs and serum from piglets and nasal swabs, other skin wipes and serum from the sow. Here we have the main project design considerations that basically showing the steps that we follow during the study. We started at day zero with two negative pig, uh, sows for influenza, and then we wanted to create an immune sow to influenza prior to start the transmission study. Why? Because we also wanted to have an immune sow that doesn't not shed the influenza virus from the nose but with contaminated other skin. Then with that, around the day 13 of the study, we would have a nurse out with contaminated skin adopting negative piglets. And finally, around the day 15, we would have a nurse out ready to do the transmission and to prove if the uh, influenza could be transmitted through the skin. So let's start with the first steps. Remember that we started at day zero with a negative sow for influenza, and then we wanted to create an immune sow to influenza prior to start the, the transmission study. Remember that influenza could be transmitted directly, nose to nose, so we wanted to avoid the transmission from the nose, but we had, or we wanted to have also, skin contaminated to prove the transmission through the skin. So to do that, we wanted to create an immune sow. We used or we allocated, separated two sows. They were negative in room A and room B. Six days after farrowing, we moved half of the litter from room A or 
or, or sound number one with sound number two. And then we intranasally inoculated two piglets in sound number one using a virulent strain of influenza with a concentration of 10 to the 5. Let's move to the second step, because remember that we wanted to avoid transmission, direct transmission from the nose. And to do that, we wanted to confirm that the sow was not shedding more the virus using a nasal swab, and that nasal swab should be negative for isolation. And to do that, four days after the first challenge, we returned six piglets from room B, or negative sow, with, to the sow number one. And again, we inoculated using the same strain and the same concentration that we used in the same challenge. So the objective of this step was that those pigs were going to serve as influenza shedders to contaminate the skin. In that way, we were ready to prove the cross-fostering and nursing process and three days after the second challenge or seven days after the first challenge, with that we had enough time to decrease the shedding from the nose, but the second piglets were contaminated the skin. In that way, we have or we moved sow and piglets to mimic the cross-fostering process and sow to mimic the NARSAW process. First, we removed two negative piglets from sow number two. And then we moved the negative sow in a clean room that was previously confirmed as negative for influenza and for peers. After that, we moved all the positive piglets and we finally introduced the two negative piglets. Now, let's go back again to the NARSAW process. So how, now we have a sow that was not shedding the virus from the nose, but with contaminated skin. And we basically moved the positive sow in the skin, not shedding the virus, with the negative piglets. So in that way, we had the rooms with that room, room A, that was empty. Room B, with the, room, with the NARSAW process, we had here a positive sow in the skin, not shedding, with negative piglets. In room C, we had the cross-fostering with positive piglets, two negative piglets, and also a negative sow. The previous study was easier, basically. We inoculated peers to the piglets uh, in, in room B, and after that, sow one and, her, and, and, and piglets were intramuscularly inoculated with a virulent strain of peers. Seven days after inoculation, sow one was moved into the room with the negative piglets. We collected samples daily using nasal swabs, other skin wipes, and serum for peers. All those samples were tested using real-time PCR, and the samples were also inoculated in cell lines uh, using MDCK cell lines for influenza and MARC 145 for, for, for peers. And now we have the results. The NARSAW had influenza contaminated other skin, and that was confirmed before movement with a virus in isolation that was positive. So we had viable virus in the skin. But when we collected the sample before movement from the nose of the sow, the virus isolation was negative. In that way, we confirmed that the 
saw was not shedding the virus, but the skin was contaminated with viable virus. And here we have the results about the related with the cross fostering. Please consider that we have here the CT values, the time, DPN means days post movement, here is the movement, and here we have the percentage of piglets that were positive. Basically, pigs adopted by the influenza positive NARSAW became positive after movement. One day after movement, one piglet became positive for influenza, and four days after movement, 100% of them were also positive for influenza. As we expected, influenza negative pigs that were cross fostered with influenza positive piglets and also the sow became positive for influenza. Here we have the results for peers. Again, the same graphic. We have here the city values, the days. Here we have the challenge, three days post-challenge, the movements, and two days post-movement, post sorry, three, six, and seven days post-movement. Again, piglets became positive for peers three days post-movement, and seven days post-movement, when we decided to close the study, more than 60% of those piglets were positive also for peers. So in conclusion, we could say that pigs can become infected with influenza and peers after suckling sows that had influenza or peers virus contaminated the skin, with the consequent implications for the use of NARSAW practices at farm level. As we expected, negative pigs became infected after cross-fostering due to direct contact. Negative sows became um, infected after adopting peers and influenza-infected piglets. This study identified a novel route of influenza virus and peer transmission in pigs and highlights the role of NARSAW at transmitting influenza mechanically to, uh, to other pigs and the possibility that wind sows transmit the virus to breeding and gestation areas. The impact of the role of the NARSAW at transmitting influence in Pierce virus in swine farms needs to be uh, further investigated at uh, the, file, the, the field level. With this, I would like to thank to my advisor, Monse Torremorel, and my co-advisor, Dr. Marie Kurhein. Uh, the RAR staff, all those guys who collaborated with the project in the Swine Disease Eradication Center, uh, and also to the Swine Disease Eradication Center for providing the funding.
Ya está grabando. Ah, oh, mierda, se visto cable. No abras el plano, si no se vea. 